You want to know what black folks feeling? Just listen to their music. Our music tell you everything that's going on in the black psyche. It's a beautiful <laughs> telegram. And nowhere in the history of black music is there a hit patriotic song. <laughs> I mean, what we do. I mean, we'll cover a song, but like, we don't write no original patriotic song. Black artists ain't never, because we got a conflicted relationship with the country. You can't write no honest patriotic song. You got to leave that to white artists. They ain't had a good time. <laughs> you had a good time in America? You're damn right. You should be writing the patriotic, and I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. <laughs> Maybe serious. You couldn't possibly expect that level of patriotism from a race of people that have so many issues. You can't. It's not realistic. Black people, don't. we don't sing about America. We sing about specific cities where you can have a good ass time. That's what we do. We don't talk about the country. We can tell you where the party at, though. We can do that. Look, I can't tell you nothing about America, but let me tell you about the city where the heat is on all night on the beach to the early morn. <laughs> Welcome to Miami. That's where you got to go. If you ever been to California? Oh, my God, boy, you got to go down to California, boy. Boy, California knows how to party. <laughs> the city of L.A., the city of good old Watts, and the city of Compton. They keep it rocking. Write that shit down. I'm trying to tell you. They keep it rocking. I think hip-hop and comedy always have a close relationship because they're both about the rebel spirit. Real hip-hop at its core is about spitting the truth that a lot of people don't want to hear or spitting the truth that a lot of people don't know about. What's the difference between that and black comedy? Black comedy at its core is about spitting truth and making people face things that they probably didn't want to really hear about. Which is why if you look at a lot of the comedy sketches that were on hip-hop albums back in the day, the relationship between comedy and hip-hop, more often than not, was with artists that had something to say. If you look at Wu with their jokes, uh, the Fugees said, uh, let me get food, chicken wings fried hard, like that, <laughs> that type of stuff. Even Snoop, I mean, he was telling stories about what was going on in his hood, and there was comedy sprinkled in there beautifully. Outkast used to do a bunch of comedy sketches. So comedy and hip-hop are both about a spirit of rebellion and a spirit of spitting black truth. And I think that's why they have a dope-ass synergy that you wouldn't get if you tried to infuse comedy into a Smashing Pumpkins record. It just ain't the same. No disrespect to the Smashing Pumpkins. You make good music. The comedy industry and the music industry are similar because, I mean, it's all about entertainment. Music and, and, and comedy, those are things that are healers to, to, to many. And, you know, you have love songs, you have happy songs. You know, you could have a bad day and, and, and comedy can come and lift your spirits just like a song can. Got that brand new money, man, I just got paid. I'm trading mad, good money for them gold road chains. Now that I got mills, I'll eat grills, I'll eat hundred dollar bills. I'm feeling like a million bucks, baby, I eat how I feel. A thing that comedy and hip hop have always had in common is the spirit of reportage, of reporting your experience, reporting what's going on in your environment and making it something that people can relate to, either people who are not living that life or people who are living that life. Racism got canceled, but just to pretend stop. Now it's back with a whole new season of Binge Watch. It's Racism 2.0, the sequel. A grassroots Kickstarter funded the reboot. So racism has got a dope marketing team. They using black folks and black folks to market their memes. When they done writing our backs, they'll just park them and leave. Pull the rug, they won't even have the carpet and clean. You never saw music as an intro. This is what started defining black comedy. When I got to LA, you pick whatever song you want to go on to. So you say, hey man, I want Snap. I'm coming out to Snap. Snap was hot. I got the power. You got everybody all hyped, you know, and then you start your act. Black comedy started blowing up. And then Def Jam came, host Chris Tucker, host Martin, host Chris Rock. And that was like the hottest show. Hip hop 
and comedy were starting to become synonymous. Def Comedy Jam is a great example of that, right? Of, of what, of hip hop and comedy merging. If you think about it, that show made a lot of stars, you know? And, I mean, movies like Friday, like Ice Cube only casted that movie based on who we saw on Def Jam. And then that movie became this instant classic because of that, you know, but that's a rapper calling them black comedians. I got a, 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 a tiny show called In Living Color, but that was hip hop. It was coming from that hip hop point of view. We, had, we broke open all the artists. Queen Latifah was seen on In Living Color. D-Nice, I mean, you name it. Whoever was hot was on In Living Color. So that mesh happened. There was this barrier between you know, white America, white American entertainment that had never really had the taste of the city, never really had the taste of where we were coming from. And it just started flowering. The Fat Boys, they're responsible for crossing it over. Flavor Flav, Bill Bellamy, Downtown Julie Brown. That just brought in a whole nother thing. And we were synonymous with that. That all became one movement. And now it's, 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 it's just broadened out. You're just seeing the different shades of the black perception. It's just growing. I feel like rappers are just getting funnier. Rappers want to be comedians. 2 Chainz is hilarious. 2 Chainz off his last album was like, I'm anti-phony, my girl anti-bony. That's a bar, that's a punchline, that's funny. If I heard that in the club, I would die. I think that hip hop artists and comedians are very similar. When it comes to freestyle, a comic, I mean, a, a rapper has to think ahead of what he's gonna say before it actually comes out of his mouth. He knows the next line he's gonna say that's gonna rhyme with the line that's coming out of his mouth. It's sort of some genius shit. And I think that comedy is the same way, especially if you get a heckler, before they're finished saying what they're saying to you, you already know what you're gonna say back to them because our mind works faster than our mouth does, thank God. I grew up in a neighborhood in Brooklyn called East New York. Have you guys heard of it? You've heard of East New York? Have any of y'all been to East New York? You've been to East New York? You from, well, you ain't from East New York, my nigga. What are you talking about? Oh, okay, I'm from a different dangerous neighborhood. Okay, nigga, I would have to take a train to my murder in your neighborhood. Comedy's music is, is, is rhythm. There's a cadence, everybody has a cadence. You know, if you look, Bernie Mac had a cadence. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Come on, fuck with run around. What the fuck is nigga doing, boy? What the fuck is nigga doing? It's a cadence, it's a rhythm, it's a music to it. See, it ain't the kid, it's us, see? We're some punk ass parents, see? See, we the puss ass parents today. See, we, I need to go back to the old school, because there ain't no grandmamas no more. Ain't that a bitch? See, ain't no grandmama. Remember Big Mama? See, Big Mama gone. So you're a grandmama now, what, you're 24? <laughs> Great grandmama, 36. Talking about I ain't babysitting shit. It's music. I'm seducing your eardrums. Now the magic can happen if I have something to say. I think about comedy and rhythm, at least that's how I write. Um, I don't sit down at a paper or a computer to write. I, like, listen to myself in the shower, and I feel... I don't know, maybe not melodious, but I feel rhythm. That's what's so fascinating about people like Chris Rock, where there's just this m musical, kind of like rhythmic drum beat, where the pacing keeps a certain time. Um, he paces a lot, and he like yanks the mic cord on like a certain kind of beat. He like speaks in refrains, like there's a lot of repetition of certain phrases, you know? That's always been fascinating to me because I was raised Muslim, so I didn't get to be in a black church. So it's like fascinating to watch how black Americans um, and people who got to spend time in uh, churches sort of carry it everywhere. I mean like there's like a gospel kind of music moving through most black art. Dr. King and Mr. Mandela's dreams are coming true. And black people and white people and Asians and Indians and everybody's hanging out together. All my black friends have a bunch of white friends. And all my white friends have one black friend. The mindset to approach 
uh, a topic in a different way with punchlines and imagery and uh, colorful descriptive vocabulary is very important. The way I look at certain subjects and topics as I would a rapper, I look at the same as comedy. Even just like writing in a kind of short, almost iambic pentameter kind of way and splitting up certain lines so that they kind of match the next line or shorter or longer. The punch word needs to be shorter than the sentence you just wrote. And I feel like that approach is very similar. And my girlfriend is white. That's just who she is. It's not a come up. And uh, I feel like the dangers we experience apart are neutralized more together. That makes sense. Like one time we were on the subway platform facing each other and standing by me looking in her direction was the guy's like licking his lips. It's like putting on chapstick for way too long. And she felt nervous, held my hand, felt safe. And then standing by in her, looking in my direction, were two fully uniformed police officers. And I felt nervous, held her hand, felt safe. <laughs> and then a cop started putting on chapstick. <laughs> I think it goes back to the authenticity. You know, with hip hop, it's all about being real. You know, do you write your own jokes? You know, can I, it's like, we might not roast battle other comedians. We might not battle other comedians, but it's like, can I follow that person? You want to be so good that nobody can touch you. You want to be on stage and be like, hey, good luck following me, bro. You know, and it's not, it's not because you're trying to destroy the show, but you're just trying to say, hey, I'm here. You know, you might want to think about doing something else. You know what I mean? UPS is hiring Biggie. You know what I mean? That's what you want to put out as a as a comic. And um, I think hip hop that that competition, also that storytelling, is all the same thing. And I think with like a lot of black comics, like if you are a hip hop fan, you have once thought about doing a hip hop comedy rap. You've you, you have broken down people's jokes like bars, like, oh man, look how we took that word and went there with it and made this left over here, those are bars. Same thing we do it with hip hop, you know what I mean? So I think it's, uh, I think it's intertwined. Think you ballin', but I'm not impressed. Your girlfriend knows my juice is pressed. You got a helipad and a private jet, but I'm over here sipping on the best of that's Is it roll, man? Yeah. Is it spring mix? Yeah. Is it baby spinach? Yeah. Is it iceberg? Damn. Tell everybody what you sipping on. A smoothie, nigga! I think the relationship with hip-hop and modern black comedy is like, it's a culture, it's a way of life, it's a thought process, it's swag, it's style, it's something that represents the community that's dope as fuck. Different places, different worlds, but speak the same language. <laughs>